I'm going to be available uh, afterwards if any, anyone wants to uh, ask any questions. Uh, we can open it up right now. Uh, I also have available uh, information over here. If you're interested in losing weight or getting fit, um, we have some personal training information over here. Um, if there are any folks in need of counseling for healthy behavior change, I have my counseling information over here. Um, I also have a handout of the slides that we just went over. Anyone would like that? There's an exercise prescription for each of the disease states that we talked about in that handout. Now, it's not a comprehensive exercise prescription. It's kind of a guideline. You're going to have to make special considerations if you're working with somebody or if you yourself have osteoporosis. You're going to have to make special considerations if you have rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. But it's a general guideline if you're interested. Uh, the American College of Sports Medicine has a great book called Exercises in Medicine um, that has an exercise prescription in it. Uh, so if you work with folks like that, you know, check, check that out. Um, there's information on your way out the door that you can get for counseling and, and weight loss as well. Uh, what questions do you have for me? In academia, all good learning results in more questions. Yes? One of the, the question is, what kind of bad side effects does exercise have? A lot of folks don't want to take up an exercise program because they know they're going to feel sore the next day or the day after. The thing I've noticed about turning 40 is it's not the next day that I'm sore, it's the day after the day after that I'm sore. And so there are a lot of people who avoid exercise for that very reason. And like I said, you can overdo it with exercise. In fact, I come from a place where people routinely do in Boulder. Um, there's a woman that I know who uh, had an eating disorder, came for counseling. Uh, she had um, memberships to three different health clubs because she would work out for about four or five hours at one. They'd kick her out because they said you're not healthy and you're you know you can't be in here all day. She'd go to the next health club, work out for four or five hours. They'd kick her out. She goes to the next health club. So you can't overdo it. <laughs> um, but if I'm going to have leg soreness from jogging and I'm trying to treat my depression or my ADHD, um, that's a lot different than having increased suicidal ideation from going on antidepressant. That's a lot different than um, you know a lot of the side effects, sexual side effects, uh, dry mouth. Uh, you know, I mean, we can I can stand here all night and make a list of all the side effects with a lot of uh, medication for you know depression and ADHD and things like that. And so if you look at the side effects, um, you know, the pain in comparison to some of the side effects we get from our medication. So in all of your research, this is the way that I'm asking, is there, I mean, is there a child or an even an adult who is uh, Um, yeah, we know that like animal therapy, um, like going to um, you know work with therapeutic animals is very helpful. Um, it could be a whole entire another lecture. We know that there there it is. <laughs> There's my next lecture. Um, I can get cows someplace first. Um, we know that there there are strong ties between diet and autism that are starting to emerge that we're starting to see now. Um, as far as exercise prescription for autistic kids, um, they can benefit from exercise just like any other kid. Uh, I mean, they're going to be at the same risk for a sedentary lifestyle that any other kid is going to be at risk at, um, or at risk for. And so, you know, it's important not to overlook these kiddos. You know, well, we can't include, you know, this disabled child 
Um, but why would we exclude this disabled child? We need to modify our activity because if we know they, they can get the same health benefits, then it's not right to deny them those health benefits, right? I mean, you're going to have to take special precautions. I mean, you can't just say, okay, go, you know, run and play because they could run out in front of the car or something. I mean, you're going to have to, you know, make modifications and things. But, you know, they can, they can derive the same health benefits as any other child, you know, from a, from a physical education or activity program. So you put it into it, like a certain exercise routine. Um, you know, they, they like routine. Yeah, they really like routine. And, um, you know, for some of them, um, they might like the routine of this is how far I'm running today, and, you know, marking it up on the wall, like how far they went. And, um, you know, it's, it's also a chance for the parent to spend time with that child. We know that our pool right across the, the quad area over here, we have special needs kids that come over a couple times a week to swim. Um, and so it can be adapted, it can be, you know, accomplished. I've had people tell me that movement with music and, um, Rhythm, yeah. Yeah, music and rhythm. Yeah, and, and, you know, if you know somebody who, who is autistic, um, if you look at the before and after, like just how agreeable they are, just how cooperative they are, or how attentive to, you know, following instructions or something that they are after exercise, um, you probably notice the difference. Anybody else? Listening to all that benefits of exercise and that stuff like that, what would you tell somebody is the easiest way to get yourself motivated to start exercising? What's the easiest way to get motivated to start exercising? Um, I usually just have to look at my kids. Do I want to be around for... Um, Vivi's wedding? Um, do I want to be around to see, you know, my grandkids? Yeah. Um, but it is... What's that? Okay. <laughs> um, but it is, it is kind of uh, demotivating to have been a certain way for a number of years and to think, okay, it's going to take me a while to back that train up a little bit and to maybe start seeing results. Um, one of the things that we know is the more sedentary I am, the more unmotivated I am to do it. If we can start, I like to call them rituals instead of habits. How many people have ever tried to start a habit? I'm the only one. Okay. Um, yeah. If you've ever tried to start a habit, you've noticed that sometimes they stick and sometimes they don't, right? So I tell people, start a ritual. Make it a ritual. Because how many people have a ritual? Either a faith-based ritual, or maybe like a family ritual or something like that. Those tend to stick more. And so if you make it a ritual, and you can say, okay, I'm doing something good for myself today, even though you're not very motivated, by the end of about 30 or 40 days, we know that, that people who try to make healthy behavior change are able to make that stick. And the more you do it, um, the more motivated you're going to be. In fact, we know uh, that if people make it a goal, and I've seen this, to, okay, we're going to make it a goal that you exercise every single day for the next year. Even if it's just, you know, 15 minutes of walking or something like that, every single day. We know that the closer that they get to the end of that year, if they have 250 days under their belt, they're much, much less likely to say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blow off today. Than they are if they're like 10 days into that or 20 days into it. Um, and so the answer, the answer isn't simple. But if you can force yourself to do it, you'll find yourself wanting to do it. Um, because we change our brain chemistry, we change, uh, we can change ourselves on a molecular level. Um, and we don't think it, it, it can be so, but it is. We can change on a genetic level, just based on our stress level, our activity level, and things like that. That's a whole other lecture also. And so, just because you have a particular amount of motivation today, doesn't mean that 10 or 20 or 30 days into it, your motivation level is going to be the same. Now, I tell people, find something fun. Like, you know, you have any CrossFitters in here? Cross, CrossFit? Yeah. There are people who love flipping over the tractor tire and climbing the rope and, and doing that. Um, I don't. And so I probably, actually I probably would if I did it. Maybe I'm trying to avoid it so I don't like make that my new habit. 
But there's some things that people don't like. Anybody want to strap themselves to a weight machine and see how much they can lift? And, you know, there's some people who don't want to do that. And so I tell people, find what you like and the fitness follows. Because you're not going to stick to something that you don't like. So I'm never going to tell somebody, well, this is the only way to get fit. You've got to strap yourself to a weight machine. Because what I found was, I'd take people and I'd say, okay, what do you like to do? Well, I like to play tennis. Okay. So we get them playing tennis. you got to get back to playing tennis. Find a tennis partner, find somebody to play tennis with. And the next thing you know, winter comes and you say, you know, uh, if you got in the weight room a couple times a year, or a couple times, so people want to get in the weight room a couple times a year, if you got in, if you got in the weight room a couple times a week, you'd be a better tennis player. Um, and sometimes that's the motivation enough to get them in the weight room. Maybe they don't particularly enjoy lifting weights. I mean, I know a lot of guys in a lot of sports that don't particularly enjoy lifting weights, but they don't make some better football player. Or they don't make some better baseball player. And so they do it. Um, and so find something that you like and the fitness follows. There's a woman I knew trying to lose weight all of her life. And um, the skating rink opened in town. And she's, oh, I haven't skated since I was a little girl, and I'm going to you know, take up skating again. Went skating every single weekend. At the end of a couple of months, she's like, oh, you know, I've lost 25 pounds without even trying. She was exercising and didn't even know it. I, you know, I hear it all the time in counseling. Well, I got this dog. Now I have to take the dog for a walk three times a day. The next time they come in, I lost a few pounds. Well, I'm not really trying. In fact, successful weight loss is so rare in our country that medical physicians are trained to investigate why you lost weight if you come in and you've lost weight and you tell them, I'm trying to lose weight, they're trained to be skeptical of that. They're trained to say, there's got to be some kind of disease state going on here. We've got to figure out why they're losing weight. Because it's so rare. And so, find something you like, and the fitness will follow. Because if I don't like it, anybody want to just wake up at 4.30 in the morning, people, and exercise? People? Yeah. I've never been able to follow that kind of regimen. Now, there have been times in my life where maybe I had an 8 o'clock class like every morning, and so it's like, God, that's when I got to exercise, right? And so I could make myself do it for a few weeks that I needed to do it, but I could never, I could never make it stick, right? And so there's some times where it's like, oh, maybe I don't like working out at 7 o'clock at night. I mean, if you're like me, when you get home, you keep your shoes off, like, they just stay on, right? So thank you all for coming tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, I tell people, you've got to find something you like or you're not going to stick with it. And, you know, for some people, it's just going out and dancing. Oh, honey, you haven't taken the dancing for a while. Okay, let's go out and dancing. You know? But if you go into it like, God, to walk my laps. You know, you're not, you're not going to be able to stick with it. But if you make a ritual out of, hey, every Friday night, you go dancing. You know? If you make a ritual out of, uh, I mean, we've made a ritual in our family that on Thanksgiving morning, um, we go for a job before dinner. It's just become a ritual, a tradition. Um, you know, so if you can make it a ritual, and you can make it stick, you can actually change how you think about it. You can find something you like to do, otherwise you're, just, you're not going to stick with it. And like I said, we're talking about natural movements here. Now, I'm not, that's not to say, you know, oh, I'm against weightlifting, because I love weightlifting. I, you know, I'm not against training for a marathon. Go train for a marathon if you want. Uh, but what I'm saying is, we have this idea that, well, I've got to, you know, strap myself to this machine, I've got to do this drudgery work that I don't want to do. Um, that's fine if you want to do it, if you don't, you're not going to stay with it, so find something you like to do. Who else? Yeah. 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 You know, um, the question was, exercising before bedtime, is it good or bad? Does it get you too pumped up? I've actually seen research for both. I've seen, oh, it, help, you know, it helps you sleep better. And I've, I've heard that it raises your body temperature and gets your heart rate up and gets you too amped up to go to bed. Um, I think it's kind of a personal experience. Because if, if that's the only time you can. Uh, when I worked for Kansas State football, we'd be in the football complex every day from noon until 10.30 at night. We're also full-time students. The only time I could get my workout in is if I went over to the rec center at 10.30 at night. That's the only time I could do it. I was also 20 years old, and when I got home, I could knock right off to sleep. I found as I got older, though, if I work out at 10 o'clock at night, I'm supercharged and ready to go. And so for me, it doesn't work. I mean, I might still work out at night if that's the only time I can do it, but that's, I know that that's going to be an effect on me. Um, and so it's kind of a personal thing. 
That's the only time you can work out if it doesn't affect you. Um, then great. If you find that, wow, I'm really not able to sleep because I'm ready to go now, um, you know, you might have to make an alteration. Anyone else? I've got all the answers. Come on. I'll let you know the next time I get kicked out of some place because I'll come up with a lecture for it. Um, I'll do this again. Um, I, like I said, I have my information here. If you think of a question you want to ask me or email me or text me, um, it's also out on the table. If you're interested in starting an exercise program, you think only movie stars hire personal trainers, right? It's not true. Some of us have just forgotten some of our basic body movements. We haven't done them for so long. And you don't realize until you go to set those cans on the shelf, you're like, oh, I can't, I can't do an overhead press anymore. You know? Or you go to push yourself up out of a chair, I can't do a tricep press anymore. And so we forget until you know, because it happens so slowly until it's too late. Um, so we're not talking about you have to be a Hollywood type and, and we're going to do some fancy, you know, exercises with you. If you're interested in, um, you know, some personal training, losing weight, there are people out there that can help you with that. We have some information tonight um, as well. And so we're talking about basic body movements, just getting up and moving, just moving your body, just doing this. Produce more neurotransmitters. So pick up some information if you're interested. I have um, packets of the handout of the slides that we did right here. I didn't want to hand them out because I didn't want you to look ahead with the note packet while I was doing my thing. Um, because what I was going to talk about was so controversial, I didn't want you to not be surprised. Thank you all for coming. Again, if you have questions, please let me know. I'll be, I'll be around after.